let me take this opportunity one to and allow me to use three hearts I have about five hearts that I would have wished to represent in this forum but let me just use three of them one I want to apologize uh, for not being able or in a position to come and do a presentation on uh, I think on 29th I was to do a presentation on sharing experiences for measuring and enhancing effective adaptation in Kenya where I could have been able to share with you quite a number of things particularly practical things that are the communities our communities have been able to achieve in their own small way in particular at that juncture I had done a presentation which probably later I can be able to share with you uh, so that it can be shared to everybody and see what is that that I wanted to share with you the practical aspects from the community uh, level so at that point uh, that's the one on the hand and I wanted also at that particular level to share with you as, uh, as one of the implementers for a number of years more than 15 years implementing community based national resources based programs and, uh, and most of them uh, is under uh, quite a number of the organizations that I was able to work with and I'm happy and appreciate that they are here today with us starting with the UNDP GEF SGP program which really did quite a lot of programs community based programs in Mount Kenya region and I'm sure that a number of the people who visited that region there is quite a lot of work that was done and that was one of the models that I lead today as part of the government. Uh, we are trying to scale it up within the, the region where the communities were able to realize some of the benefits from the adaptations that they did within the Mount Kenya region. Mount Kenya being the World Heritage Site. And I'm sure uh, uh, the, there is quite a lot we can be able to learn at that, that point. And I'm sure that there was also uh, other uh, prayers that I was able to work with, uh, like art uh, under the Shakiria Rasrimari, and I'm happy that I can see them being one of the sponsors in this region. Before the day that I decided to join uh, to join this position, I was the last time I worked with art as their program manager under CRM implementing that program. I also want to take this opportunity also, particularly I'm referring this because Laikipia was one of the counties that was visited and uh, all this I wanted to share with you during, when, during the visit or over here. There are some other programs that we implemented with Caritas Yeri uh, of uh, energy saving and other programs that are based to communities and as well as there is a program that I would have loved to take the, the people who visited that region, a program of a small group, international small group and international uh, small group and tree planting program. That is the TIST, where communities are planting trees for carbon credit. So there were quite a lot of things I would have loved to share with you at that point. Uh, allow me also to use the other, uh, the other hat that uh, I've been mentioned as the governor of Laikipia County. Laikipia, well I'm in Laikipia. Uh, I'm the chief servant of the county, uh, of the people of Laikipia County. But when I go to the Council of Governors, I become the chair of the, I become the governor, and therefore I head the, that docket of water, environment, and natural resources and mining, where I would want to encourage many of our, our fellow Kenyans to use that, that portfolio, to use that committee, particularly to be able to get uh, a number of issues being discussed and this is where I would want to encourage the youth to engage at that level and we are able because all these programs that we are talking about they still have to be implemented at the county level and this is the high time that each and every prayer and the stakeholders we need to appreciate uh, the, the level of devolution and, uh, and I'm sure that uh, with appreciating that we will be able to achieve and realize a greater results. Allow me now uh, now to use the last hat, and uh, this is uh, where, as the chair of the Environment and Natural Resources, as well as sitting on behalf or representing the chair of the Council of Governors, uh, His Honorable uh, Isaac Luto, 
uh, who has been uh, our chair for the last two years. And therefore, standing here, I'm representing the Council of Governors, the 47 governors. And therefore, it is my great honor to be part of this auspicious occasion, uh, representing the Council of Governors, uh, and, and to see so many important stakeholders in the natural resources management sector present today. It is indeed a privilege to interact with the caliber of individuals present in this room, who represent a wide spectrum in the natural resource management industry. Ladies and gentlemen, today's scientific evidence that has been collected and analyzed so far suggests that the climate is changing and that human activities are exhibiting natural changes in the climate and its advanced impacts are perceivable. In the recent years, there has been an increase in the understanding the negative effects of climate change and the challenge it poses to development. As a consequence, adaptation to climate change has become a key subject in international climate change talks. Climate-related hazards like floods, drought, electric lanes, pests and diseases, and hailstones are not only new phenomena to our country, but their socioeconomic and biophysical effects have increased in intensity and coverage across decades. Across the borders, the dreams and aspirations of people in Africa and the world over hang in the balance due to the simple reason that climate change knows no borders. Our response today will define our future, and this is due to the fact that climate change threatens our very own survival as a people. The environmental, human, and financial costs of climate change is rapidly becoming unbearable. And this once distant threat has moved firmly into the present with extreme weather events that show us exactly what these changes may mean for future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, in Africa, and particularly in Kenya, climate change has started having significant impacts on physical systems and ecological systems. And I'm sure the days that we have been here, we have experienced what is happening in Naro, and this, that is just an example of what is yet to happen in this country. This has been due to extreme weather events such as droughts and floods, shifting patterns of precipitations, increased recurrence of the extreme events and shifts in ecosystems that would be catastrophic. For example, those associated with the expansion of ranges of pathogens, diseases and pests that affect human and non-human populations. With the societies that have actively participate in resource-dependent economic activities, and these are the communities such as farming and fishing in Kenya and larger Africa, climate change has increased the vulnerability, especially of those already marginalized. Inevitably, it is the marginalized who suffer the impacts of changing environmental conditions. Sadly, climate change will also affect a wide array of systems that include, but not limited to human health, coastal systems and low-lying areas, freshwater resources, just to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been a tendency to deal with the current or near-term climate impacts in a just-in-time fashion. This can no longer be the case. There is urgent need for proactive adaptation to changes already with us, which require factoring climate change into the decisions that, that affect the long-term sustainability of systems to the impacts of climate change. In particular, at this juncture, this is the time that our donors, our financial institutions, 
we need to consider when we are implementing or financing the community adaptation programs. We need now to go beyond the three years, the two years uh, period of our programs because climate change programs or the natural resources based programs need more of the time to realize the results. Adaptation is an enormous task that requires the coordinated and sustained efforts of different actors within and also beyond the state. Managing national resource systems with the added stresses associated with the climate change pose a challenge. The devolved units offer a better chance for talking the problem of climate change. The problems brought about by climate change may be community-based specific or affect a specific geographical region within certain counties. Hence, interventions would be county-specific or community-specific. Through this approach, the stakeholders at the county level can be fully engaged in formulating adaptation strategies as a means of building a constituency for the resource management problem and adaptation. I believe that such kind of approach, looking at the problems and possible interventions with local perspective, would offer better pathways for vulnerable communities to engage in developing response strategies for adaptation and ensure that there is room for change in those strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, social acceptance of any response strategy to environmental change of any form is critical. Ways of adapting to climate change need to be in harmony with existing cultural structures, institutions, and society norms. Response strategies themselves need to be flexible enough to be able to adjust to ongoing environmental and social change. Management approaches need to be interactive, flexible, and inclusive. They must also take into account the technological, institutional, and management options that are available to individuals and communities. For example, when key vulnerable groups are excluded in urban planning process, poor, poorer households are forced to live in riskier areas in urban settlements, making them more vulnerable to risks such as flooding. And it's happening in this country. These groups are frequently ignored when infrastructures are being designed to alleviate such vulnerabilities. Additionally, marginalized groups within societies, including older people and women, are often excluded from decision-making structures. When planning is not collaborative, the sustainability of such plans to enhance adaptation to climate change and their execution come into question. In agriculture, for example, new technologies associated with the genetic modification of crops are often held from for the potential to cope with climate stresses and consequently as an adaptation to climate change. However, there, is, there are social and environmental movements that express the public mistrust and uneasiness about genetically modified crops. And for this reason, these technologies cannot automatically be assumed to be potential adaptation strategies for drought resistance or food security. At the county level, as regards to adaptive and community-based resource management, building resilience into both human and ecological systems would be an effective way to cope with environmental change. Societies and communities dependent on natural resources need to enhance their capacity 
to adapt to the impacts of future climate change, particularly when such impacts could lie outside their experienced coping ledge. Social learning, specifically in relation to the cause and effect of communities' actions and acceptance of strategies that build social and ecological resilience would go a long way in helping the communities. Ladies and gentlemen, devolution, as many of you are aware, has brought down decision-making functions to the grassroots, which would enable us to look at problems with a local perception, perspective, such as community-based management approach, would enhance adaptive, adaptive capacity of, by building networks that are important for coping with extreme events and by retaining the resilience of the adapting resources and ecological systems. We last, we direct our efforts to enhance adaptation to climate change. There is need to understand how well we are adapting to the changing climate and preparing for the future. We need also to understand the influence of adaptation programs and having to the communities and target systems. Where these adaptations are cons consciously planned activities, whether by public agencies or individuals, there is an interest in accessing the performance or relative merits of alternative measures and strategies. Estimates of likely future adaptations are an essential element of climate change impact and vulnerability assessment. The degree to which a future climate change risk is dangerous depends greatly on the likelihood and effectiveness of current adaptations in that system. I would like to finish by saying that some degree of climate change is already inevitable. Climate changes are happening now and are projected to increase in both frequency and severity before the benefits of interventions will be realized. On behalf of the Council of Governors and the Chair of the Natural Resources Committee, I would like to applaud you for your attendance and participation at this memorable conference on climate change adaptation. We thank you for according me this opportunity to address you. And I wish you all well in all your endeavors, and I wish you a pleasant stay in Kenya. And I want to welcome everyone back in this country, Kenya, and as my colleague Fatuma has mentioned, Kenya is safe. Kenya is safe, and I'm sure the people who came to Laikipia and other regions that you have managed to face it, I'm sure you can attest to it, that Kenya is safe. Some other times media uh, really misrepresent Kenyans, and I would want to say at this time that Kenya is safe and we want to welcome you back. Come and visit the counties. Come and visit and enjoy our nation. Kenya is where you can even be able to see a bear in this continent. Kenya is where you can be able to witness the, five big, the big five at a glance within two hours. Kenya is safe. And therefore, I want to wish for the ones who are traveling, I want to wish you travel safe, travel, your travel journey masses, and God bless you all. And I want now to take this opportunity uh, to declare this ninth international conference on community-based adaptation conference officially closed, and God bless you all. Thank you.